Being able to bring your Pokemon up from older games into newer ones has always been a feature I've really enjoyed. In this video, I just kind of wanted to sit down and talk about the concept of cross-generation transfer, although there's some other, like, not-so-cross-gen aspects to transferring Pokemon that they've introduced over the years, so I just kind of wanted to talk about just being able to bring your Pokemon into different games, because it's just such a such a cool feature. Now, interestingly, the first instance of being able to transfer your Pokemon from the main games into a different game would actually not be cross-generation, but using the transfer pack with the Pokemon Stadium game. And I always thought that was really cool, just being able to use the transfer pack with the N64 controller. You pop the Game Boy game in, you can pop that in your N64 controller and use your Pokemon on the TV in 3D for the first time. It was really, really cool stuff. I was there pretty much right when it came out. It was just really cool stuff. You could go into Professor Oak's lab, you could you could both look at your Pokemon that were in the game as well as transfer them into Pokemon Stadium just to store them and then use them in the actual challenges for the uh, Stadium Cup matches or the Gym Leader Castle. Just just really cool stuff. And there was there was a few other features in there. Let me know in the comments below if you've got memories of using Pokemon Stadium with your Game Boy games. But the first actual instance of Cross Gen Transfer, which you know, may or may not have been inspired by this whole idea, was the ability to just, just directly trade Pokemon between the first two generations of Pokemon games. In Gold, Silver, Crystal, they introduced something called the Time Capsule. Time Machine? Um, I'm, I'm forgetting the exact name. But you could use that to trade directly between Gold, Silver, Crystal, and Red, Blue, and Yellow after you've unlocked it at a certain point in the game. And it was a little weird, because... You weren't just transferring the Pokemon one way or back, you were actually doing a trade, which meant that Gold, Silver, Crystal, if you went in, you had to make sure that all the Pokemon that you brought in were completely, you know, Generation 1 legal, not just Generation 2 legal. So if you had, like, a Haunter, you couldn't bring it in if it had Mean Look or Shadow Ball or anything like that. It had to have only moves that were from the first generation of Pokemon games. And, of course, you couldn't bring Pokemon in at all that didn't exist in Generation 1, so you couldn't bring in, like, Scizor or Heracross or, you know, Pile of Swine, whatever. And it was a really cool feature. Like, I remember using that feature a lot. Like, I, I would bring in my Pokemon that I'd spent so much time on with uh, Generation 1. I had, like, level 100s of, like, Blastoise, the Legendary Birds, Mewtwo, Mew, and just... A lot of different Pokemon when I was a kid that I just, I brought them into Pokemon Gold and then I would use them in Pokemon Gold and I just, I had a lot of fun being able to do that. It was just a really cool feature, but unfortunately the stat structure of these games doesn't really jive with the stat, the way stats work in later games. So either because of that or because they generally, as they honestly had said, couldn't get the Game Link cable to work between Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, you know, whatever the case may be, that was a cutoff point and we had a bit of a reboot with Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. And of course they would also make Fire Red and Leaf Green to remake Pokemon Red and Blue in a way that was able to communicate with those games as well. So, you know, that was pretty cool. They also had made Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness for GameCube, which were supposed to be like a successor to the stadium games, because they, they have that same kind of communication feature where you can get an accessory and plug it into your Game Boy Advance and communicate with those games and bring your Game Boy Advance Pokemon. And that wasn't entirely what they did though, because they also had their own little like story mode. So they're almost like main series adjacent games. Like they don't call them main series games officially. And you know, it, it was, you could see that they were, they were spending a lot of time in generation three, just trying to get a lot of the damage of breaking the first two games and the th uh, third set of games, you know, apart, you know, they had to kind of mend that together because their, their goal when they first set out on making Pokemon was, you know, gotta catch them all. So when there was a, you know, new set of games that you couldn't catch them all, they, they had to try to fix that somehow. So it was pretty interesting how they did that. And they would go back to being able to actually get stuff transferable between games with 
Generation 4 in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, you had the ability to transfer your Pokemon using the DS dual slot mode. So there's this cool feature where the older models of the Nintendo DS, or the Nintendo DS they call Fat Model, and the Nintendo DS Lite, they had both a Game Boy Advance and a DS slot. So you could just pop a Game Boy Advance game in your Game Boy Advance slot for that. You could pop a DS game in the DS slot, and Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, they could read the stuff that was going on in that other game. They could transfer stuff over, although you had to beat the game first in order to unlock the location. It was still pretty cool, because you could basically just bring every Pokemon that you wanted up. The method behind it, though, was... Oh, it was... It was really tedious. Like, you could do six Pokemon at a time, and originally, the first set, the first like generation four games had a 24 hour time limit so like you had to and by time limit i mean between like transfers so like couldn't transfer everything all at once could only do six a day and i remember that was uh i when i was a kid that was one of the most frustrating mechanics to work with now thankfully arco soul silver that was released in the same generation that that was you know it was really cool because like they fixed that so you could just use those games and just bring all your pokemon in six at a time still there was a location called pal park where you went and caught these pokemon kind of like a safari zone game but you know not really you were only hunting down those six pokemon and the pal balls park balls uh as they called them they were 100 they were they were basically master balls but catching the pokemon in those balls didn't actually count as catching them in that ball you would get them in the pokeball that they showed up in from the generation 3 game but it was still really cool i had like hundreds and hundreds of hours of playtime in these older generation 3 games so like during generation 4 i would just spend a lot of time using pal park and i would bring all of these pokemon from my old games into the fourth generation games because i had i had so much playtime in both those generations and i think being able to bring my pokemon up from one generation into the new one again was definitely a factor in being able to do that sort of thing and it wasn't just that like you could also just have the game boy advance game and the ds alongside the DS game, and it would just unlock certain Pokemon that you could just run into in the wild. Of course, you had to, like, progress to a certain point in the game, but, like, you know, for instance, there was Pokemon in Diamond, Pearl, Platinum that were exclusive to this dual slot mode, so to speak. Like, I know one really cool thing was as long as you had any of them, uh, any of the games, like Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire, Red, Leaf, Green in that GBA slot, you could go get uh, Gengar in the uh, old Chateau, the same place where you could go get Rotom. And it, it was kind of cool because, like, we weren't really known for being able to, at the time, get, like, fully evolved Pokemon that had weird evolution methods like that. Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, I mean, they had already started doing that sort of thing with, like, Steelix was a wild encounter in Iron Island, but it was just, it was really neat that they were, like, allowing you to just use these, like, new features to, like, get certain Pokemon that you just couldn't otherwise. And I... I gotta say, like, it was it was frustrating, but it was really nice that they started doing this again. Now, Generation 3 and 4, they also had, like, these, like, side things that you could transfer stuff into. I didn't mention when talking about Gen 3 specifically, but you also had stuff like Pokemon Box, Ruby, and Sapphire, where you could use Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, and you could, like, bring all of your Pokemon in there, but it was, it was literally just a storage software. And similarly, they had uh, My Pokemon Ranch, where you could bring your Pokemon in the Gen 4 games, or some of them anyway, up into Pokemon Ranch, and you could, like, watch them, you know, run around in this, like, super deformed model, and it was, it was neat, but, like, I, I never really used these. Uh, I didn't have a GameCube until, like, super, super late compared to, like, most people, so I didn't really experiment with a whole lot of this stuff. I mean, I never even had the transfer cable between the Game Boy Advance and the GameCube, so I didn't even get to really do that. But one thing I did get to do is, and this wasn't my own copy, my friend had Pokemon Battle Revolution. And I remember that was, it's not the best game, and it's its definitely the worst of like the stadium style games, we'll call them. But it did do a couple of things better than any of them. And that was that, so you could bring your Pokemon from your Generation 4 games into Pokemon Battle Revolution, and you could use them the same way uh, as you could with Pokemon Stadium. So it was, it was really cool. Like I would just bring, I would just like take my Pokemon and try to like do all the little Coliseum modes that they had in that game. 
And it was really fun because, like, you could also, in Pokemon Battle Revolution, unlock, like, different costumes for your character. So it was really cool being able to, like, customize your trainer. Like, that was the first game where you could use Pokemon that you raised and also customize your trainer. So I think that really kind of, like, paved the way for, like, Pokemon X and Y onward. Kind of just kind of incorporating all these things together into, like, one single game instead of having it segmented across a few different games. Now, Gen 5 was interesting. They didn't have any of that, like, stadium-esque, like, side stuff. So it was just the main games. You had Black White, Black 2, White 2. And the transfer method for that was... Oh, boy. Um, so, like, I... I love Pokemon Black White, Black 2, White 2. Those are some of my favorite Pokemon games. And similar to, uh, Harkle, Soul Silver, Diamond Pro Platinum, the, uh, method to do transferring, you had to beat the game first, obviously. And you had this new Pokemon Transfer Lab. And like Harkle Soul Silver, you could do six at a time, but it wasn't restricted by day, so you could do as many times as you want. But rather than do like a safari game where you hunt the Pokemon down and like catch them with like these like no failure Pokeballs, you had to do a mini game. So like how that worked was like you had like you had to get two DSs because they're both DS games, so that's you know how you did it. And you would use download play. Now, DS download play was really interesting. I don't know if anybody used uh, it that's watching this. I'm sure you have. But you used to be able to do stuff like in New Super Mario Bros. DS, you could send uh, the signal over to your friend's DS and you could play the mini games together. Even if they didn't have a copy of New Super Mario Bros. DS, I thought that was really cool. They did something similar with uh, Mario Kart DS. You had a restrictive versus mode that you could send over through D download play, but everybody had to play a shy guy because, you know, they didn't have, you know, they didn't have their own copies, so they would have to do that. It was just really cool, like, just download play as a feature, and they finally made use of it in the Pokemon games. And this mini game, you would send uh, six Pokemon you wanted from the Generation 4 game over to the Generation 5 game, and you would have to use a crossbow slingshot thing. I, you would like swipe, you'd use the stylus and you would pull back and you would have to try to get the Pokeballs to land on these Pokemon that are like hopping through these bushes and it would use like their little menu sprites and man like it once you got the rhythm down like once you knew how to use how to do the mini game it wasn't bad it was just like man why 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 this why why, why this but like it's it, it's not that bad it, it is a lot faster than the pal park because with the pal park you had to like hunt them down and sometimes like the rare pokemon just they just wouldn't show up for a while like they would just be there you'd just be like running through the grass surfing on the water for a while just you know trying to hunt down that kyogre from pokemon sapphire and just just wouldn't pop up for a little while but like with the with the download play uh mini game for generation five like that wasn't an issue all the sprites would always be there they always acted in a very similar fashion it was just it was just kind of annoying because like it just i don't know man it, but you know it was it's fine having the feature to transfer the pokemon is of course just better in general than not having it now when they moved on to the generation six games they introduced an all new way to transfer your Pokemon, and this has basically been the norm since. They've used this in different ways, but we uh, got shortly after the release of Pokemon XY Pokemon Bank, as well as the partner app Poke Transporter. Now, I'm going to talk a lot more about Pokemon Bank in another video because Pokemon Bank is, uh, well, it's going to go down one day. We don't know when. Uh, as of the making of this video, they, they still have it going. And it's not going to turn off with the 3DS and Wii U shop closure in April. It's going to have to go down one day, and we, we don't know when. But for the time being, you got this cool, so much more convenient feature where you can just straight up open the software. It connects to the internet. It does take a little bit to load up because it's, you know, 3DS. It goes into like a cloud server, and you just take the Pokemon you want, and you just put them in the cloud service, and then you can load up Pokemon Bank using another game because you connect using different games, either the one that's in your 3DS's slot or you could also use your downloaded games as well. You put them in. Now, you could only access Pokemon Bank itself with a Generation 6 or a Generation 7 game. So the, all the 3DS games used Pokemon Bank, both Generation 6 and 7. So this is where it got a little interesting is because before you had these transferring methods that only worked between two generations directly, but with Pokemon Bank you had like this interchangeable 
nature. But what's interesting is like, so once a Pokemon was put from a Gen 6 game into a Gen 7 game, and then put on Pokemon Bank, like Pokemon Bank would read that it has entered the, the Generation 7 game, and then it wouldn't be able to be brought back to a Gen 6 game. Like they'd have like a little um, graying out around the, uh, like the sprite itself would be fine, but like the little tile that they'd be sitting on, it'd be dimmer than like the rest of the box to kind of show you, oh, you can't bring this Pokemon back into Gen 6 because it's entered Gen 7 game. It's still really cool though that you just had this, you know, just much more convenient software. And obviously they wanted you to be able to bring your Pokemon from the previous generation. So the partner at Poke Transporter, you would, now it could only communicate with the first box, but you'd be able to take all the Pokemon from the first box in your Generation 5 game and just move them up in a Pokemon bank. They'd start off in a transfer box, and then that transfer box could then be moved into a Pokemon bank box properly. And it was pretty much instant. Like you just, I mean, you had to boot up Poke Transporter, you know, bring the Pokemon in, you know, do the transfer for the box one, and then open up Pokemon Bank, which on the 3DS, as I said, could take a little while, but like it was still much faster than the previous method. So it was really, really convenient, much more streamlined. And they extended this uh, support in 2016. We had the virtual console releases of Red, Blue, and Yellow to celebrate the 20th anniversary. They had like a, a whole new 3DS unit with like special plates to commemorate and everything. Like they went all out for the 20th anniversary celebration. And being able to play these games again on the 3DS, oh man, it was so cool. For the first time, we were able to communicate with the newer generations of games with the first two sets of games. It was it was amazing. Now, because this happened during the 20th anniversary, these the virtual console releases, they can't communicate with the Generation 6 games. They had this set up so that you could bring them into the Generation 7 games. So you'd use Poke Transporter the same way as with Black, uh, White, Black 2, White 2, and you'd throw your Pokemon from the first box up to the transfer box, and these Pokemon from the Virtual Console games, they came with a little Game Boy icon, because they had like these new marks that they introduced in Generation 6, and so every Pokemon from whatever game, depending on the game, it gets a mark. Uh, they didn't do this for the Generation 3, 4, 5 games, but starting in Generation 6, you know, they've got a special little mark to signify the game that they came from. It's their little origin mark. And it was it was really neat to just like be able to bring Pokemon from the classic games into the Generation 7 games. At the time, it was a feature that they even expanded on when they released Gold, Silver, and Crystal between 2017 and 20 early, early 2018. Like, I'm pretty sure uh, Pokemon Crystal on Virtual Console was released like January 2018. And it was, for the first time, starting in 2018, we actually had every core series game able to communicate with each other again. It was a little wonky how they did it, obviously, like Generation 1 and 2 could only ge communicate with Transporter and Bank, which would then go into Gen 7. But, you know, for the first time, Generations 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all of them could actually send Pokemon to each other in some way. And it was, it's been the coolest thing, and I'm going to get more into Pokemon Bank in its own video, because I got a lot more thoughts. But, you know, as we moved forward, we had Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu, and Pokemon Go, which is really weird. So, like, Pokemon Go is its own thing. It's not really in a generation, so to speak, but they wanted Pokemon Go to communicate with the core games. So, the first way they did this was when they released Pokemon Let's Go on the Switch. That was the first set of Switch games. There's a feature exclusive to Pokemon Let's Go where you could bring your Pokemon from Pokemon Go into Let's Go, and you'd be able to catch them in the Go Park, which replaces the Safari Zone in that game. And they also used that as a way to introduce two new Pokemon, Meltan and its evolution Melmetal, which were mythical Pokemon, and you could get these new Pokemon in Let's Go that never existed before. It was, it was really weird. I I hated doing the, the evolution in Pokemon Go for Meltan because it takes 400 candies. And even though you can catch a ton of Meltan, 400 candies in that game, man, that is, that is insane. And then we got Sword and Shield. And Sword and Shield, just like X and Y, would be the next generation of Pokemon games on new hardware, which would require new transfer software. So they came out with Pokemon Home. And Pokemon Home is the current way that we can transfer Pokemon between generations. 
you know, it's 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 pretty cool. Like it's it's pretty flawed because you got like both a mobile version and a Switch version, but they're not the same exact thing. Like they they are in the sense that you will have access to the same Pokemon. Like you you have your account and you'll be able to look at your Pokemon through it. But the way that they handle the software in each version is a little different. So I it's I don't know. It's weird. You can you can look at the 3D models on the mobile app, but not on the Switch version. Uh, yeah, I don't know, it's kind of weird. But they introduced that in early 2020, the year after Pokemon Sword and Shield had released, and that's just been the thing ever since. They've been updating it, you've had some new features along the way, like being able to change a Pokemon's moveset between uh, transferring to different games. And this has been kind of necessary on top of just being a way to transfer between generations, because you can't even trade between games of the same generation anymore unless it's the exact same pair so like sword and shield are disjointed from uh brilliant diamond and shining pearl so whereas like five red leaf green ruby sapphire emerald they can just trade with each other now nah, you, you gotta go through home you gotta move them up in a home in one game and move them from home into the new game but it's fine you can do this pretty smoothly and you can do it en masse and just do like a bunch of them all at once you can edit their tinker their move sets based on what they've been able to learn already and it's 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 pretty cool and they've updated it so that you can also move pokemon backwards from the generation 9 games into the generation 8 games so long as the pokemon existed in those games because of the move set thing you know you just it's it's weird so like by default pokemon home now if you send it into another game it's going to overwrite their move set they're going to only know the moves that they knew on level up at the level that they're in that they're at when they're sent into the game so if you don't go over to the pokemon and like actually move change its moveset around and they'll have the moves that like they knew as well uh as options but they're gonna have the level up move set when they're sent in so yeah, i don't know it's kind of weird how they did it but it is cool that they have it because it does allow Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet to be brought back into Sword and Shield, into Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, into Legends Arceus. So that's where we're at now. It's you, We've got a, a weird method again where you can send Pokemon backwards a generation, which is something that we haven't had in like 25 years almost. So it's it's interesting. I don't know where we're going to go from here. Like they're definitely going to probably keep Pokemon home for a pretty long time where it's a mobile app and where it's on the Switch and then we're going to get it on the we're going to probably be able to use it on Switch too. I don't see Pokemon go home going away anytime soon. I think we're going to be able to keep using Pokemon home for a really long time. Kind of like how we've been able to use Pokemon Bank for a pretty long time. But yeah, that's that's all of the different ways of transferring. Now, I didn't talk a whole lot about Pokemon Home just yet because I've got another video plan because I'm gonna I have a whole living Dex and I'm gonna go into that in that video I'm gonna show that off and I want to talk about how I did it you know what resources did I use just just the nitty-gritty of what that was because there's a lot to talk about and I'm, I'm glad that the uh, community I had a poll I said you know listen do you guys want this all in one video or do you guys want it in separate videos and you guys said separate videos and looking at how long I've been speaking for I am so glad you guys picked to split them into different videos because I got more to talk about but you know I'm sure that I'm not the only person here who's like done a lot of transferring between games and moved Pokemon into other games. There's so many reasons why you might want to do it, either because you want to complete the Pokedex or because the new game has like a battle facility and you want to take your old Pokemon that you used in a previous game's battle facility up into this game, being able to bring your Pokemon up from the th generation three, four, and five games in order to use them in 3D and do like battle my saw and other stuff or just play with them in Pokemon Ami. Like, that's just a really cool feature. Like, you could you could do so much with being able to bring your Pokemon up from different games. And they've introduced a new aspect to this with, like, marks. And you've got ribbons that Pokemon have been able to wear since the Generation 3 games of Ruby Sapphire. And those carry all the way through. There's so much that is retained on a single Pokemon that they've done. And it allows you to kind of tell a story with that Pokemon when you bring it from one game to the next. So... I really don't think Pokemon would have been the same without this effort to continually support 
the legacy content with the newer games like that. And that's, you know, that's not really something that a lot of series can boast that they do. Like, you know, Game Freak and Pokemon Company, they get a lot of slack for a lot of the mistakes that they've made, a lot of the, you know, valid criticisms that can be levied at the games that have come out over the years. But if there's one thing that I think they should definitely be praised for is they have gone above and beyond to continually support their old games staying connected to their newer ones in a way that, you know, 20 years going, it's it was hard to see that they could, you know, whether any series or franchise could pull that sort of thing off. I don't really know if there's anything that isn't just like one major game, like an MMO, like a PC game with continual updates. I don't think there's a game that's not one of, that's not something like that, that's got that level of legacy support to it. So it's a feature that's really near and dear to me. I've used it so much and I will probably continue to keep using it in the future, but I want to hear from you guys now. In the comments below, I want you to tell me your experiences with cross-generational transfer or just transferring Pokemon between games in general that don't normally just have interconnectivity. Like, you know, Pokemon Stadium. I'm sure there's quite a few people who have used Pokemon Stadium or Pokemon Stadium 2. I didn't really talk about it, but it's pretty much the same thing as Pokemon Stadium 1, just with Generation 2 support. Or, you know, maybe you're somebody that's played Pokemon Go a lot and you've transferred your Pokemon from Go into Home. That is now an option that you can do uh, directly. They, it took a little bit for that to happen since, you know, Pokemon Home came out way after, but that's another thing that you might do. Or are you, you know, someone who's just kind of been playing on the Switch, but you have been using Home to, like, move stuff between? Just tell me all about your own tra uh, transferring stories down in the comments. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Anyway, uh, this was just a real, this was an unscripted video. I didn't really... Uh, plan a script for it because I just kind of wanted to talk off the cuff kind of like a fireside chat just kind of give my thoughts and yeah I just thank you guys for listening it really means a lot I want to share all of my stories about Pokemon with you all I want you guys to share your stories with Pokemon with me of course so I really appreciate you guys tuning in listening in of course make sure you do all of that you know YouTube algorithm god appeasement stuff if you could please you know leave a like leave a comment, share it with a friend if you think that they might be interested in listening to this, as well as, of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. I've got more videos coming, both, you know, in this style and in the more traditional, more produced and edited style that I've been doing for previous videos. We got more videos coming, so thank you all again. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your week. Take care and see you next time.